Hello everybody, and welcome to the Caden side. Today we are playing yet more compact claustrophobia. And the goal of today's video is to automate graphite, steel, and the byproducts of hitting a wall with a steel pickaxe. All of that will be in one factory that I spent most of today's episode on. We will then use what we got from that factory to create a large compact machine. But until then, I'm going to need to create some tunnels. Tunnels are useful because they help link compact machines together, which is basically what makes compact machines worth it. And they're what I've been working on in the background of this intro. In case you're curious why I made light engineering blocks, it's because the tunnel crafting recipe requires you to throw light engineering blocks into Immersive Engineering's metal press. And here, I'm creating a bunch of modularium for compact machines. Twenty-one and a half stacks in total. And here, I'm creating signal plated item ducts, which can transfer both items and power to upgrade the auto miner that I made at the end of the last episode. Here, I'm creating my first normal compact machine, the size under the large compact machine. creating dust for clay. I then use said clay with sandstone and bricks to create coke bricks, which I will then use to make a coke oven, which turns charcoal into coal coke. Assembling the coke ovens. I'm making an improved blast furnace for better steel production. I'm going to show you the entire process of piping just so that you can know how long it can take. And the reason why this takes so long is because coal coke has one input, charcoal, and two outputs, kerosene oil and coal coke. Coal coke being the one that we're looking for. So we need to automate charcoal, bring that in, turn it into coal coke, take that out, and then nullify the kerosene oil. That wasn't even all of it. I came back multiple times later in the creation of this factory to fix something here. Now I'm making the tree farm, which will automatically make the charcoal. And it does that by placing a sapling, giving it phyto grow, and then chopping it down with boron spaxel hoses, which gives me wood, apples, saplings, and sawdust. I turn the wood into charcoal, I destroy the apples, I put the saplings back into the auto clicker that auto plants them, and the sawdust goes into the future Fido Grow factory. Now I'm putting down redstone alloy to turn the tree cutting auto clickers on and off, power, and filling the said tree cutters with boron spaxel hoses because they instamine leaves and logs. This is going to be the Fido Grow factory, and to make Fido Grow, you only need four items one nader, one slag, and two sawdust. I'm getting niter by using a manufacturer to turn sandstone into niter. The slag comes from the blast furnace, and the sawdust comes from the tree farm and from a sick factory that I'll make soon. The sick factory will require a garden cloche, an infinite water generator, a sawmill, and another manufacturer. Hmm, I seem to have lost some footage. I'll just explain with this picture I got. I will combine some sticks from the factory I just made with the blast furnace's steel and a sequential fabricator to make steel pickaxes, which I then hit up against a wall for materials. 
I then suck up those materials with a vacuum lighter. I had to really speed this next part up because otherwise it would take 50 minutes. Anyways, the giant factory requires lots of power, so I made 10 more thermoelectric rooms for a total of 14. And these ought to be the last comeback thermoelectric generators I make, because later in this episode I'll make a fission reactor, which is far superior. I'm putting down some preheaters to make the blast furnace smelt quicker. To finish off the factory, I'm going to use a manufacturer and a pulverizer to turn the charcoal into graphite dust. Now to make the fission reactor, I teased that earlier. But first, I'm going to need to automate its fuel source. So to do that, I'm going to need an isotope separator, a factorizer, and a sequential fabricator to make LEU-235 fuel. And the way the fission reactors work is that there's 52 different fuels, all with different power, heat, and time lasted. More on those later. So you need to figure out which fuels you can best automate. And like I said earlier, the one I'm going to use is LEU-235. And then there are coolers, about 15 in total, with a change in cooling rates depending on the cooler. But they all require to be next to certain blocks to work. This again changes based on the cooler used. There are also reactor cells, and the more you put in, the more power you get. But the more heat made and power cells consumed. That was the overly simplified version of it. So if you want to know everything, probably just search up another YouTube video on it. What was wrong? I'll tell you what was wrong, past Caden. You see, I accidentally added an extra zero to the lapis cooler's cooling rates in the fission reactor calculator which completely messed everything up and ended in me getting hit by the force of a nuclear bomb. And it was so devastating because I had just spent the past 45 minutes working on something that just blew up. And now let's go to the one that didn't blow up. 12,840 power. For example, each thermoelectric generator made 30, and all of them together made just over 5,000. So this is a massive jump in power gainage. And in a future episode, I'm planning on making a bigger one. My next goal was to create the large compact machine. And to do that, I needed to melt down and then reform four normal compact machines. I decided that to finish this video off, I'd go advancement hunting. And in case you don't know what advancements are, because I haven't really shown them much, they are basically things that speed up game progression, and throughout these videos, I skipped a few of them. I'll start off with the energy meter advancement, and I won't be explaining what all these advancements do, because I won't really be using them, and I'm really just collecting them because I'm a completionist. Next is the aproxy advancement, shulkin time, morphing time, pick your frequencies, dying for yellow, Corrupt PSD. A terrible idea. Another quest? Burn the rest. The pufferfish and the redstone block. And to end it off, clipboard. That'll be the end of today's video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to subscribe. And if you want to see where these videos are made live, you should follow me on Twitch. Remember to like the video, and then maybe even hit the bell. And then comment down below what your favorite part of the video was. The total amount of footage in this video was around 19 and a half hours. And I'll see you on the Caden side.